We have already discussed the legends of the seven Adietas with their stillborn brother and shown that it represents seven months of sunshine in the ancient Aryan home. But this was not the only period of sunshine in the Arctic region, where, according to latitude, the sun is above the horizon for six to twelve months. The sacrificial session of the Navagvas and the Dashagvas thus lasted for nine or ten months, and amongst the Ashvan legends, that of Saptavadri is just shown to have been based on the phenomenon of ten months sunshine. Is there any legend of Surya in the Rig Veda which refers to this phenomenon? That is the question we now have to consider. The statement that ten horses are yoked to the carriage of the sun has been shown to point out a period of ten months sunshine, but the legend of Indra stealing the wheel of the sun is still even more explicit. To understand it properly, we must, however, first see in what relation Indra generally stands to Surya. It has been shown previously that Indra is the chief hero of the fight between the powers of light and darkness. It is he who causes the sun to rise with the dawn, makes the sun to shine and mount the sky. The sun, it is further stated, was dwelling in darkness, where Indra, accompanied by the Dashagvas, found him and brought him up for man. It is Indra again who makes a path for the sun, fights with the demon of darkness in order to gain back the light of morning. In short, Indra is everywhere described as friend and helper of Surya. And yet, Rig Veda mentions a legend in which Indra is said to have taken away or stolen the wheel of Surya and thus vanquished him. It has been supposed the legend may refer either to the obscuration of the sun by a storm cloud or to his diurnal setting. But the former is too uncertain an event to be made a basis of a legend, nor can a cloud be said to have been brought on by Indra. While we have no authority to assume, as presupposed in the latter case, that the legend refers to the daily setting of the sun, so we must therefore examine the legend a little more closely and see if we can explain it in a more intelligible way. Now, Surya's chariot is described in Rig Veda as having but one wheel, though the wheel is said to be sevenfold. In later mythology, it is distinctly stated that the chariot of the sun is a monocycle. If the wheel is taken away, the progress of the sun must cease, bringing everything to a dead stop. It seems, however, the wheel of the sun means the sun itself in this present legend. Thus, the phrase used is Suryam Chakram, evidently meaning the solar orb itself is conceived of as a wheel. When this wheel is said to be stolen, we must therefore suppose the sun himself was taken away, and not that one of the two wheels of his carriage was stolen, leaving the carriage to run on one wheel as best it could. What did Indra do with this solar wheel, or the sun himself, which he stole in this way? We're told he used the solar rays as his weapon to kill or burn the demons. It is therefore clear the stealing of the solar wheel and the conquest over the demons are contemporaneous events. Indra's fight with the demons is mainly for the purpose of regaining light, and it may be asked how Indra can be described as having used the solar orb as a weapon of attack for the purpose of regaining Surya that was lost in darkness. It amounts to saying the solar orb was used as a weapon in recovering the sun himself, which was believed to be lost in darkness. The difficulty is only apparent and only due to modern notion of light and darkness. Surya and darkness, according to modern notions, cannot be supposed to exist in the same place. Rig Veda distinctly speaks of the sun dwelling in darkness, in two places at least. And this can be explained only on the supposition that Vedic Bard believed the sun was deprived of his luster when he sank below the horizon, or that his luster was temporarily obscured during his struggle with the demons of darkness. It's impossible to explain the expression dwelling in darkness on any other theory, and if this explanation is accepted, it is not difficult to understand how the solar orb could said to be utilized by Indra in vanquishing the demons and regaining morning light. In other words, 
Indra helped the sun, destroying the obstruction which marred or clouded his luster. And when this obstruction was removed, the sun regains his light and rises up from the nether ocean. Indra is therefore correctly described as having stopped the wheel of the sun and, turning it round, flung it into the concealed darkness at the bottom of the Rajas, or the netherworld of darkness. But the passage important for our purpose is shown here. The first half of the verse presents no difficulty. It means, O oh, Indra, in the striving for the cows, do you with Kutsa fight against Shushna, the Ashusha, and the Kuvaya? Here, Ashusha and Kuivaiva are used as adjectives to Shushna. And it means the voracious Shushna, bane of the crops. The second hemstitch, however, is not so simple. The last phrase is split up in the Pada text, as shown. And it means destroy calamities or mischiefs. But Professor Oldenburg proposes to divide the phrase, as shown, and in conformity with another verse, translates it as Thou hast manifested thy manly works. It's not, however, necessary for our present purpose to examine the relative merits of these two interpretations. We may, therefore, adopt the older of the two, which translates the phrase as meaning, Thou hast destroyed calamities or mischiefs, omitting the first two words. The second part of the phrase may, therefore, be rendered, Thou hast stolen the wheel of Surya and hath destroyed calamities. We have now to ascertain the meaning of Dash Prapitva. Sayana takes Dasha as equivalent of Adashash, literally bitest, from Damsh, to bite, and Praptiv to mean in battle, and translates, Thou bitest him in the battle. This evidently is a forced meaning, one that does not harmonize with the other passages where the same legend is described. Thus, when we're told that Shushna was killed at Ahna Prapitva, the last phrase evidently denotes the time when Shushna was defeated. While Indra is described as having checked the wiles of Shushna by reaching Prapitvam by the side of the expression Dasha Prapitva, we are thus have two more passages in Rigveda referring to the same legend, and in one of which Shushna is said to have been killed at the Prapitva of day while in the other the wiles of the demon are said to have been checked by Indra on reaching Prapitva. The three expressions shown above must therefore be taken to be synonymous, and whatever meaning we assign to Prapitva must be applicable in all three cases. The word Prapitva is used several times in Rig Veda, but scholars have not yet agreed to its meaning. Thus, when Grassman gives two meanings for Prapitva, advance, and the second, beginning of the day, according to him, Ahna Prapitva means in the morning, but he would render Prapitvam Yan simply by advancing. Later, he would also take Prapitva, meaning in the morning. So the word Prapitva also occurs in other places, and here, Professor Oldenburg translates it as at the time of advancing day, and quotes Geldner in support thereof. Sayana translate Prapitva by friendship and Prapitva as having acquired. Under these circumstances, it is safer to ascertain the meaning of Prapitva direct from the Vedic passages where it occurs in contrast with other words. Thus we find Prapitva very distinctly contrasted with Madhya, the middle and Udita, beginning of day. And in both these places, Prapitva can mean nothing but the decline or end of the day. Prapitva is explained as the equivalent of Prapatani or Astameya, meaning the decline or fall or end of the day. Adopting this meaning, the phrase shown would then mean that Sushna was killed when the day had declined. Now, if Shushna was killed when the day had declined, the phrase ought to be by analogy interpreted in the same way. But that's difficult to do, so long as Dasha is separated from Prapipa, as was done in the Pada text. Therefore, we propose that Dasha Prapipa be taken as one word, 
and interpreted to mean at the decline of the ten, meaning then that Shushna was killed at the end or completion of ten months. The phrase shown here is taken as a compound word in the Prada text, but Oldenburg, following on the Petersburg lexicon, splits it into two words. We propose to deal exactly in the reverse way with the phrase Dasha Praptiva in the passage under consideration and translate the verse thusly. O Indra, in the striving for cows, do thou, with Kucha, fight against Chushna, the Ashusha, the Kuvaya. On the decline or completion of the ten months, thou stolest the wheel of Surya and didst destroy the calamities. Passage thus becomes intelligible. We're not required to invent any new meanings for Dasha and make Indra bite his enemy on the battlefield. If we compare the phrase Dasha Prapitva with Ahnaha Prapitva, and bear in mind the fact that both are used in connection with the legendary fight with Shushna, we are then naturally led to suppose that Dasha Prapitva denotes in all probability the time of the contest, and that Ahna Praptiva does in the other passage, and that Dasha Prapitva must be taken as equivalent to Dashanam Praptiva and translate it to mean on the completion of the ten, which can be done by taking Dasha Prapitva as a compound word. The grammatical construction being thus determined, the only question remains is to decide whether Dasha, ten, means ten days or ten months. A comparison with Anna Prapitva suggests days, but the fight with Shushna could not be regarded as been fought every ten days. It is either annual or daily, and thus we are led to interpret Dasha in the compound Dasha Praptiva or Dashanam when the compound is dissolved as equivalent to ten months, in the same way that the numeral shown above is interpreted to mean of the twelfth month. The passage thus denotes the exact time when the wheel of the sun, or the solar orb, was stolen by Indra and utilized as a weapon of attack to demolish the demons of darkness. This was done at the end of ten months, or the end of the Roman year, at the close of the sacrificial session of the Dashagvas, who with Indra are said to have found the sun dwelling in darkness. The construction of the passage proposed above is not only natural and simple, but the sense it gives is in harmony with the meaning of similar other passages relating to the fight of Shushna, and far more rational than the current meaning which makes Indra biting his enemy in a rustic and unprecedented manner. It is the Pada text that is responsible for the present unnatural meaning, for if it had not split up the phrase, its correct meaning might not have become so obscure as it is at present. But the Pada text is not infallible, and even Yeshka and Sayana have adopted amendments in certain cases. The same thing has been done rather more freely by Western scholars. We are not therefore following any untrodden path in giving the, the Pada text, especially when the verse is more naturally and intelligently interpreted by taking the word as one compound word. When the verse is so interpreted, we get a complete account of the annual course of the sun in the home of the Aryans in ancient days. It was Indra who caused the sun to rise up after his long fight with Vitra. And when the sun had shone for ten months, Indra stole the solar orb and took the sun with him into darkness to fight with the demons. That is the meaning of the whole legend, and when it can be so naturally explained only by our Arctic theory, the necessity of the latter becomes at once established. Thank you.